All right, today I've made a short video for you on how to calculate the price of a bond as well as the yield of a bond using a financial calculator. This can definitely come in handy if you're taking a basic finance class and you need to learn how to do these calculations pretty quickly for a test. Also, you know, you're going to need this throughout your life, learning how to price bonds and yields if you get into this kind of business. So let's take a look at this. Uh, and we're going to do a hypothetical. Let's say we want to calculate the price of a 10-year corporate bond with the following terms. Let's say it pays a coupon 8% semi-annual, which is normal. That means every six months. Okay, par is $1,000. That's the future value. That's what I'm going to get in 10 years. The yield of maturity is also going to be 10%. So that's de determined in the marketplace. This coupon is determined in the negotiation when we're creating the bond itself. That's just terms of the bond. But this is, happens in the marketplace, the yield to maturity. And those yields change all the time. Okay, so uh, using my, my, my financial calculator, first let me show you the numbers I'm going to use. You know, on the financial calculator, of course, we use these white buttons here right and these white buttons are all the present value or time value of money um, time value of money buttons on a financial calculator so that's what makes this Texas Instrument BA2 plus unique it has these buttons on there so I've got to figure out what these buttons represent here so the payment of course go back to the screen here the payment is going to be the coupon payment it's 8% but it's divided by 2 because it happens every six months, and I multiply that by the par value. So every six months, the terms of this contract says I'm going to get in the door $40. So by buying this bond, I get $40 every six months for 10 years. So the N is going to be 10 years times 2. So it's 20, 20 is the N. So it's two payments per year. The future value is the, simply the par. That's 1,000. That's what comes back to me in 10 years. Okay. And the IY, the yield to maturity, um, is 10%, but we're going to divide that number by 2, so it's really a number that's 5%. Now, you will see here, I'm only going to enter in the number 5. I'm not going to enter in 0 0.05 or 5% in the financial calculator. That's what makes it a little bit unique versus Excel. When you're doing a similar function in Excel, you actually have to use the number 0 0.05. Here, we're going to use 5, okay? So, let's go ahead and do all this now. And we'll just do it in the same order as uh, that I showed. But you can actually do these in any order, okay? So the payment, let's do that first. 40 PMT. So you'll see payment is 40. The N is 20, so I'm going to hit 20 N. Okay, uh, next I'm going to do par. Par is 1,000, 1,000. Par is my future value, so that happens in 10 years. So I'm going to hit FV. And then my IY, my interest rate, which is set by the market, I'm going to hit 5 IY. The only thing I haven't hit is present value. So now I'm going to hit the CPT button, Compute Present Value. And it gives me this number, minus 875. So why does it say minus 875? Well, the reason is, is because it's $875 out the door. I'm paying $875. And then I'm going to get back $40 every six months, and I'm going to get back $1,000 in 10 years. So the, the stuff I get back is a positive sign. The stuff I pay out is a negative sign. But what that really means is the price of the bond is $875.37. Okay, or 30, call it $0.38 cents if I'm rounding correctly. So the, um, the other thing to note is this bond is trading at a discount to par. It's trading at, uh, you know, it's trading at... 875 versus a thousand dollars okay so it's trading at a discount the reason it is it's because the coupon is lower than the yield to maturity yields are high when yields go up bond prices go down this yield is above the coupon therefore the bond is trading at a discount if the yield to maturity was below the coupon let's say at some number like six or five percent the bond would be trading at a premium so let's do another example here. This time we want to use a bond yield. We want to calculate a bond yield. So this time I'm going to be given the price of the bond and everything else, but I'm not going to be given the bond yield. So I've got to calculate that number. Let's use similar terms just to keep it easy. We're going to use a 10-year corporate bond here. We're going to make it a semi-annual uh, bond. Again, 8% is going to be the coupon payment. That's very normal. Okay. And normal that it's semi-annual. That's the way corporate bonds are typically done. The par is again a thousand, 
uh, the current price we're going to make this price a high price a thousand one oh five this this price is trading above par what does that tell you that tells you that the yield to maturity is going to be below this number so that's a good sanity check when we finish the problem at the end to make sure that yield of maturity is below the coupon okay so if we use a financial calculator we're going to do the same stuff payment here is simply that coupon divided by two times the par that gives me forty dollars that's coming in the door every six months the end is going to be twenty again so it's number of years times two because it's twice a year okay the future value is going to be the par that's a thousand so all that is the same now the present value is something I'm always also going to punch in here. PV. Now notice that I'm going to punch in a negative number, negative 1105. Why am I going to do that? Because that's 1,105 out the door, and it's 1,000 in, and it's $40 in. So I have to use a negative sign. If I don't uh, get a, use a negative sign, I'll actually get an error on this problem. You know, so you don't want to do that. So let's, let's go through this. Now what I don't have here is the IY. That's what I'm solving for. So if I know all the buttons but one, I can solve for it. So let's go in the same order. Let's actually, let's mix it up this time just to show you that this works. Let's go 20 is N. Let's do the future value next, 1,000 future value. Uh, payment. All right, so we put in 40 payment. Notice I always put the number in first before I punch the time value of button. And the last thing is 1105, but it's got to be negative. So how do I do a negative number? Well, I do this. I go 1105. I put that in. And then I go down here to the bottom, this plus minus sign in the Texas Instrument BA2 plus calculator. I hit that. That gives me a minus sign there. You see that. Now I hit uh, present value. And now I just hit compute, CPT, IY. And I get a number that's 3.276. Now, that is a semi-annual yield because I've done this in semi-annual space. So what I need to do is multiply that by 2. All right? And so I just would go, you know, times 2. And that gives me a number 6.55. That's my yield to maturity. Okay, you got to make sure you do that last step there. My yield to maturity is 6.55%. All right, so that's very simple. This is how to use a, a Texas Instrument BA2+. Plus. Uh, calculator. I've got another video on this channel that goes through more calculations with the Texas Instrument BA2+. Plus. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, you know, subscribe to this channel because this is a channel where I make finance fun for students. Thank you.